Hey guys, this is Mikro. I wanted to take a second and explain how new world damage works and how you can utilize that along with the new changes to the actual ring perk to optimize your damage for your build in new world. So new world damage in general is calculated in a, okay, we're not using black. A new world damage in a way is calculated in a, in a manner that is sort of like a, a constant that you have, which would be the constant damage that your, your weapon de deals. If you open up your inventory, you could see that. And there, and then this constant is multiplied by a combination of buckets. These buckets belong to different attributes and they scale off each other in a way that makes it optimal to try to increase the value of the buckets overall uh, rather than stacking one bucket itself. This behaves in a way that's similar to compound interest uh, in the sense that like if you have a bucket, say, say you have uh, the, you can choose four, like four points here, uh, like, like 40% in like any of these buckets. If you want to optimize it, you want to spread that out evenly, or I guess let's not use 40% here. Let's use 30% just for easy math. You want to do like, uh, let's stick to the same color too. You would want to do 1.1 here, uh, 1.1 here, and then 1.1 in this red. Uh, and the reason why you would do that is because if you, if I bring up a calculator here, uh, and you see if you do 1.1 times 1.1, that's going to get you 1.21, multiply that times 1.1, uh, you're going to get 1.331, versus if you put them all in one bucket, you'd only get 1.3, right? So you lose out on this like little bit of extra attribute. The base idea for how, how you want to optimize damage uh, from this standpoint is you want to maximize each value that you have in the buckets overall and try to have like kind of a level playing field so that all your buckets are as maximized as possible. Where this gets interesting is when we actually talk about the kinds of buckets that are actually present in New World, and I want to talk about those inherently here. Uh, so you have a you have a base damage bucket that modifies the actual damage of the weapon itself. Uh, this is not capped, which is noteworthy. So you can increase this as high as you want, but the more that you increase that bucket, the more you lose out on uh, increasing other things, if that makes sense. So you want this is a bucket that's generally good to put stuff in because it's uncapped. But if you are not capped in other fields, it is not to your advantage, and you would rather be putting your uh, attribute, like kind of your, your points into other fields if you can choose. So if you had to choose between being in power capped or going a little bit extra with the, the base damage bucket, you would generally want to be going to, you'd want to be staying near that in power cap rather than kind of not being near that in power cap whatsoever and then just maximizing the space damage bucket. So that's the, the one caveat with that one that's kind of interesting. Uh, as I just alluded to, there's an empower bucket uh, this is also the weakened bucket. It's like you have the two effects that go opposite of each other. Uh, there's a rend and fortify bucket. These are the new rend and fortify I'm talking about here. These are kind of weird in the sense that everything from these buckets is multiplied by the other buckets, but in the way that they scale alone is more linear than other buckets themselves. There's like a constant factor, which you can't really see because I'm covering up my screen here, uh, but it's 0.26 for light per fortify, 0.39 for medium, 0.46 for heavy. So basically heavy players will get more value out of the rend and fortify than medium players and light players. This is the change that they implemented so that light players weren't invincible when they ran a bunch of fortify and that's when they changed everything to have like a different cap for that. In terms of caps for for the empower and weaken, uh, this ranges from uh, kind of 0 0.5 to 1.5. There's not like a it's just you go 50% above, 50% below in terms of PvP, as far as I'm aware. Uh, the Rend and Fortify, uh, you can go to 30% Rend or 200% Fortify. Or, or sorry, you can go to 70% Rend uh, to 200% Fortify. So it's like there's a big range there that you can kind of optimize for. If you have a lot of Rends that's, and you hit those targets that have a lot of Rend on them, you're going to be doing a lot more damage than be, being the attacking targets that are not Rended. And that's like a really, really key thing that is optimized a lot for PvE that you don't see a lot of PvP players play to optimize as much. There's a few other kind of sneaky buckets in here uh, that are more so kind of niche legacy ones. Uh, there's a ABS bucket is how it's coded in the back end. Uh, this is your old Fortify. Uh, this only applies to gems and to uh, SNS's aura at the current moment. 
but both of those give this old fortify. Unlike the 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 random fortify here, which scales in a linear way, so I'll draw linear in terms of this pink. Uh, this old fortify scales in a quadratic manner, so it basically gets more value the more that you have. So fifty percent old fortify is very very strong compared to like fifty percent uh, new fortify, for example. In terms of the the last bucket, this is kind of like a, a PVE related bucket. Uh, I can't spell today, PVE. So this is uh, basically anything related to PVE in terms of wards or banes. Uh, or, uh, banes are not in there. It's like wards in PVE that go in that PVE bucket. It, it behaves in a very similar way to the, the ABS and Old Fortify where it's quadratic. Uh, so that's the thing that's noteworthy there. And then the other thing that belongs in that bucket is Great Swords Rend and uh, Fortify from going into stances. So if you are in Defiant Stance, you're effectively giving yourself an old Fortify. If you are in Onslaught set Stance, you're technically giving yourself a similar effect to an old Rend, which is super, super uh, negative to you because it behaves in a quadratic-like manner, which is a noteworthy thing there. So basically the thing to take away from this is there are like five different buckets in the game uh, realistically, three of these you kind of control, and you want to play to optimize these as much as possible. So getting into uh, the ring stuff, this base damage, this applies to your keen. If you crit, uh, then you'll, your crit damage modifier will get added to this base damage bucket. So that is noteworthy in a sense that if you already have a very high base damage value, adding to this bucket is effectively not going to do very much. That's why when I put out a video the other day where it was like, hey, Brazil's only worth like 1.5 to 2% per piece that you actually put on, according to a simulation that I made that is on this GitHub page, which I'm using as my background because it's black and it's very easy to write in black. Uh, but that that is the noteworthy thing there. Uh, Empower Weekend, this would be like your fire damage if you have a fire damage ring like that would be something that you could look at here and i'm going to look at this from like a fire staff perspective today because that's something i've already coded up a test case for and i can manipulate uh, very easily and then you have stuff like rend and, and fortify like you have the new sns change where if you go for light attacks that's going to apply a rend now instead of a slow so that's another way to get access to a rend which is going to increase your army's damage overall if they're hitting that target so moving on to this i want to jump into a kind of simulation I've already ran this simulation once, but I, I want to kind of like walk through it uh, with you guys and like what it actually means. So this is going to be the, the first simulation I want to go through is what happens when you have uh, a random weakness that's between like 0 and 10% applied to you. Uh, this is like generally what happens from like a range perspective. You don't have that many weaknesses on you. And in terms of like how that would scale, in terms of having a fire damage and invig ring, a keen invig ring, or a keen fire damage ring, is your fire damage invig ring is generally the best thing to go for. Uh, this keen will only add to that base damage column that the fire damage has if you actually hit the crit, which is why fire damage tends to do a little bit better than keen. For fire stuff, keen and fire damage are relatively close because fire staff has a very, very high crit damage modifier and people tend to put vicious on fire staff. So for most weapons, you would heavily prefer this fire damage, but for fire staff itself, it is pretty close between keen and uh, fire damage on that aspect. If you're looking from do you want to run keener fire damage from the stats perspective they're basically the same thing fire damage has a little bit be better potential uh in terms of like the mean or like the average uh, they're very very close fire damage still wins out in that so if we're going to increase this say to 30 percent, which i think is more normal if you're playing closer to point but if you're playing off point maybe atypical uh and let me restart this because i have to re-import that file and I'll, I'll run this again if you have it for 30%. So you'll see here that everything gets a little bit closer. As the amount of weaken goes up, the value of keen goes up and the value of base damage effects like invigorated punishment goes down. And the reason why is because you're not maximizing on that empower bucket anymore. And if you're not maximizing on that empower bucket, things that boost that empower are generally going to get more value than other things that have base damage. This is why for EU there's a tech right now where people put Jasper in their Warhammer because people tend to play Warhammer when they do not have cleanse up and when they don't have cleanse up you want to be you will have a lot of weakens up because you're usually around point as a bruiser and that weakened effect will be negated by Jasper because Jasper adds to this uh kind of it, it adds to the empower bucket. It is the only uh gem that you could slot in an armor that adds to that empower bucket which will allow you to generally do more damage while you're weakened and this is the same concept of why 
with this example where if you are generally more weakened, Keen will go up in value. That being said, Keen still is not uh, Keen in fire damage is still not better than fire damage in invigorated punishment in this case. But with the new update, uh, the value of uh, the amount of invigorated punishment stacks that you get is going to go down. So th I set this up before, so it was only applying an even amount because it only applies an, an even amount normally uh, between 0 and 16%. Uh, if we were, say, to make that between 0 and 8% and lower that value, I had to, again, restart this because I had to re-import that, and then I had to rerun my simulation here for this case. Uh, then you will see that the value is relatively the same for every single aspect. So if you are heavily weakened and you're not getting a lot of invigorated punishment, the values of all these uh, damage aspects are relatively the same. Uh, in terms of like which one is technically the best, the fire damage invig is still technically the best if you assuming you have half the invig stacks that you could have normally. So this would be like an average of a four percent damage from your invigorated punishment, which is not that much, uh, but it, it is an, still enough for it to overall be the winner here. Mortal empowerment is also an interesting case. I did not code up a simulation for for this time, but that is something that may be considerable with the next patch because then you will be maximizing on that. And, uh, that will uh, provide more to that base damage bucket than the invigorated punishment will generally, but you still need to be landing kills for that to actually apply. So it's something that's a little bit more niche, but overall could be very, very helpful. And uh, I guess lastly, if you guys want to see the project, I did upload it onto GitHub so you can kind of play around with it there. Uh, I don't think it has my, my latest changes on there yet because I haven't refreshed the page, but I've been uh, committing and pushing uh, code to it. So... And with that being said, I'll leave you guys with that. If you want to maximize your damage with the next patch, you still want to run invigorated, even or invigorated punishment, even though it is in a weakened state. Uh, and and if you are heavily weakened, maybe consider running uh, something like a Jasper would be my, my a final takeaway from this kind of thing. And that would be typically in a Warhammers where people slot it. The reason why they don't really care, people or in terms of bruisers don't really care about it in terms of a Great Axe is Great Axe, you don't really care about your damage unless you're going for a deck combo. And if you're going for a deck combo, you want to reduce that weaken by popping a cleanse pot before. And if you pop a cleanse pot before, it doesn't matter because they're going to be out of power cap due to Mauler stacks. So that's the only takeaway there. And I'll see you guys in the next video.